Welcome everyone to this first webinar in our series of short Learner Enterprise and Learner Cloud webinars. My name is Anders Nilsson and I'm the Technical Solutions Consultant for Learner Cloud and Learner Enterprise on SaaS. And we are in today's webinar going to talk about the Trend Reports feature, which has now been updated in Learner Enterprise 2021 R1. So depending on which Learner Enterprise or Performance Center version you are coming from, the UI has now been modernized in this release and the underlying technologies have been upgraded and the functionality has been simplified. So we can now more easily create reports, manage the test runs trended in the reports and also add trend views and customize categories to our reports. Quite a few defects have of course been fixed from the older versions and the initial loading of a report has been improved and the trending speed is now also faster. But before going into all of that, let us talk about briefly why we should use it. The Learner Enterprise Trend Reports enable you to compare performance test run data over time, which is important for the long-term success of your application or your system under test. Trend Reports are also very powerful uh, when it comes to keeping track of and providing visibility into how any changes to the system affects the performance trends over time, be it new releases of the application or installation of patches or hotfixes on the same. It might be easy to think that simply rerunning a test every time a change has been introduced and then compare that to the last time we did so would be enough. But doing that won't allow you to spot any negative trends that might occur over time and once we do spot a regression, it might be very hard to figure out what exactly caused it or when, since that might have been introduced a couple of changes ago. So this is where trend reports are very useful, since it allows you not only to spot the trends over time, but also then to backtrack to roughly where any detected trend originated, and hopefully in doing so, quickly figure out what changes caused that negative trend. And with that brief intro, let's now go over to the demo here. So the requirement for adding test runs to a trend report is of course that it should in general be the same test that is executed on a regular basis or as mentioned every time after a new change has been introduced. So basically making sure that we are comparing apples to apples. So I will add a couple of runs here from a simple test that has been executed a number of times already. And uh, these ones have been trended in the past, simply just to speed up things a little bit. But in general, trending runs here only takes a couple of minutes anyway. And once all the runs have been successfully trended, our default report is created for us. And with that, the, we have the three tabs out here on the left. So these three tabs are simply our suggestions to the user on what to compare or what to look at. But each person or performance engineer using the tool will of course have their own preferences on what to compare. So there is uh, the possibility to create customized or personalized views with multiple widgets as well. Also combining grids and different charts, which I will cover later on. So, but first the default tabs. So the, the trend overview is just to provide an overview of the runs that have been added to the trend report, basically to show that the runs which we do compare are executed under similar conditions. So here on the general details tab, we see the trended runs, their duration, and the number of voted users. Then on the uh, workload characteristics, that contains information around the different uh, transactions per second, hits, and throughput. And then finally, the performance overview tab shows then the transaction successes, fails, and uh, the different error rates. Now, so I've set the first run as the baseline run here, but we can also switch between using a baseline run and simply comparing each run to the previous run. So if I switch over to the transaction availability, transaction availability tab here, we can then up to the top here, if I switch from the compare to baseline and I switch to previous, we can see that the numbers change a little bit because the the values will be different if we compare it to the baseline or if we just compare it to the previous run. 
On the subject about comparing, when it comes to selecting what to compare to, the options are, as mentioned, to either compare to the previous run or to a selected baseline run, uh, where the baseline run would then often be the final build from the last quarter or from the last major release of the software. So in, in the short term, or when we are looking for immediate issues that, or where we know what to look for, then compared to previous run can often be used. But for more long-term issues or for trends in general, then compared to baseline is usually more suitable since we might not always be interested in seeing direct improvements in each new build, since some needed changes can have an accepted negative effect on the AUT. And what we are interested in though is the overall performance trend on how the AUT performs over a longer time. So if we look at the three default pages that have been added to the report here, we then have the, the current tab here, the transaction availability, which looks at the availability of the transactions. So basically looking at and comparing pass and fail rates between the different runs. Then uh, on the transaction performance, here we see how, the, uh, how our transaction response times or the TRTs are doing between the different test runs. And the, the colors out here, they are due to the trend thresholds. So let me open those ones. And here we can see that for all measurement types to have a green improvement or color, we need to see a 50% better value. And for the yellow ones and for the red ones, we need to have regressions of either 25% or 50%. But also for the, for the first line here, uh, for the transaction response time, uh, we also have the ability to set a lower threshold for any improvements. Since, for example, while going from a response time of uh, 0.1 seconds to 0.2 seconds is technically a 100% improvement, but it's normally probably not still pertinent. So we can here then also add that, for example, an improvement should be more than two or maybe five seconds. And while this reports show the data in the table view by default, we can also switch that to either, see here, the, in the display view, we can either have a line graph, like here, or which then makes, well, it makes the results a little bit easier to visualize. Or we can also display them as a uh, stacked graph, which might be suitable for other types of scenarios. So it's easy to select the suitable graph or table type, which, whichever you want, just to highlight, depending on what you're looking for. Then also we have the, uh, finally, the system resources. Uh, and they are then looking at whatever monitoring you have added to your test. So you can again compare, for example, the CPU usage between the different runs, memory consumption, or whatever monitoring measurements you have access to. But again, as mentioned earlier, these three tabs are simply our suggestions to the user on what to compare or what to look at. So if the performance engineer using the tool would like to set up their own pages or own page, uh, that is, of course, uh, possible as well. And to create a custom report, we click the Add category up here. We provide a name. And then we add whichever widgets we would like to have in here. So, for example, we want to have the transaction response time, and we would like to have that as a line graph. We add the transaction pass-fail summary, and we would like to let's say, have it as a stacked graph. And then on the system monitor side, we want to see the CPU utilization, again, as a line graph. And I would also like to have a empty custom widget here. And once we've been added, we can scroll up and we see all the graphs up here. And so then we have all the widgets that we added here. And I can then, if I want to, I can change the, for example, the layout order. So if I go and click here, we can see we can have all four graphs uh, fitted on the screen. And if I then, for example, would like to change the transaction pass and fail graph into a, um, well, let's, let's, let's pick a line graph. I can do that. 
or if I want to have it as a, uh, as a grid, I can also do that. And if I don't want to have the uh, legend beneath the, the graph here, we can just go in here and we can hide it if we want, want to want to see it anymore. And I can even also just select for specific, uh, for one of the widgets, just select which runs I would like to have added to it. So if I don't want to have these middle two ones here, I can then remove them. Then in the fourth custom widget here, we can then basically mix and match as we want. So for example, if I would like to see the transaction response time from Microfocus, and I would like to overlay that with the um, CPU resources that we were used here, also select average, we can then get that in the same, uh, in the same widget here. And again, of course, I can select to uh, view this as a, uh, if a graph, if that makes better sense to me. So we can see we do have a quite large selection of options when it comes to customize the report as we want it. And when we are happy with it, we can then, of course, export it as a PDF file, which again, we can also modify and select with what we want to have included in this one here. So, so if we then expand here, we can see these are then all the items we can then check if we want to have or not. So I'm just going to export everything in here and that will take a couple of seconds to generate that one. And if I open it up here, we can see that everything that was available to us in the uh, trend report in Lower Enterprise is now also available for us in the uh, PDF report here. So this is, of course, very good if you want to send this out or the, just to view the results offline or send it out to management or for anyone else who is are interested in this. What I haven't mentioned is that once you have created the initial trend report, you can then set your um, tests or scenarios to automatically add any new runs that you executed to that specific uh, report. And if doing so, it's important to remember that runs won't be added or trended as soon as the run has finished. But they are instead, they are instead automatically added to the trend report when the automatic trend task runs which is configured in the administration in the maintenance tasks. And that is normally set to publish runs for trending about every 60 minutes. And now for the second demo or example I'm going to show here today is if, for example, you do a daily build test, which can also be triggered by either, for example, Jenkins or Bamboo, and then have those runs automatically trended, since that is just a tick box in the plugin itself. So it's very easy to add. And we can see here how we do that in Jenkins. So let me move over here to the daily build. So I've executed a number of tests here to try to simulate a daily build where we are making sure that our new builds or other changes such as patches are okay and that they aren't introducing any new regressions. So when doing so, uh, yet another good feature to use here is the set run label that I've used here, which allows us to label each of the different runs with something more explanatory. So we can see here that I've added a, a couple of labels here to the different runs. And if I then move into the customized report here, so by running this daily test and adding it to a trend report, that then also enables us to spot negative trends over time and allowing us to hopefully track back when a change was introduced. So in my made up example here, if we would have only used an SLA of, for example, eight seconds, which is around this line here, um, as our pass criteria for our testing, uh, this is, of course, a little bit high, but again, this is just an example. And if we then just have, would have compared each run with a previous run, it would have been easy to miss this negative trend that we're seeing here. So let me filter out everything else. So, and so we, if we only would have looked at a SLA of eight seconds, then we wouldn't have discovered this error until around run 97 here, maybe. And uh, then without this trend history, it would have been very hard to figure out what caused it. But if we are looking at the trend here, uh, we might then be able to draw some conclusion that somewhere around defect 4 or defect 5 down here, uh, something was introduced that over time has gotten worse, and which then hopefully would narrow down the troubleshooting needed. Uh, 
And again, this is just a simplified, made-up example, but I do hope that you see the thinking behind this. And now for my final example I'm going to talk about here today. Um, it's a thing that was a bit complicated in the previous versions of the trend reports, and that is the custom measurement mappings. What that is, is a feature that allows you to map transactions with different names onto new collective or aggregated names. It can be that the initial number of tests has some transaction names misspelled, and now that has been corrected, the new batch of tests aren't mapping up correctly. Or it can also be that some monitor names simply have changed, but they are still measuring the same thing, and you still want them reported under the same measurement. And this is then where you make use of the custom measurement mappings. So if we look at the uh, transaction performance tab here, we see a number of not applicable uh, runs here, or the measurements, and that is due to the uh, category transaction here has been renamed to categories and the logout transaction has been renamed to sign off. But now since we know that those transactions are measuring the same thing, we then want to map them to the same uh, measurements. And so I got, go up here in the custom measurements mapping. And so how we do that is simply to create a new mapping and we just give it a name for that. And then we select what type of data we're going to use, and are we going to use this for transactional data. And we can also use it if we're using monitoring data, data if we want to. But here in our case, we're just going to make use of a transaction, and then the type is of the transaction response time. Then if we, uh, if we have a if we run a larger number of tests uh, with the same transaction name, we can then pre-fill the, um, the, uh, the list here with one of those names. So, for example, if the majority of tests has used the transaction name, I can then apply that to all the runs down here. And then simply, I simply work my way back from the last run, selecting the new transaction name, which is categories, until I don't find the uh, categories name anymore. And this is here, so now we're back to category. And once I'm happy with that, I'll just say this. But again, I've done this previously for another, um, just an example, so I'm just going to delete this one. And then we can see that we have the, the aggregated category here, and we have the aggregated log of transaction as well, where we're matching the logout with the sign of transactions. One thing to mention here is that the new mapped measurements won't show up automatically in the default graphs. So, for example, here on the Transaction Performance tab, the, they won't be visible. So we have to create a custom report here. So, provide a name. And uh, the, we can then go in and add our widget, and we are adding the um, transaction response time here. And the, again, we can see that the tra map transactions are still not visible, so we then click the three dots here select the configure measurements and then we can go to the mappings here for the group and here we have our uh, transactions and we want to see the average values so i click apply and i close this so now we see that we have our two aggregated categories here or transactions so we have a category and we have our log off and we can see that the values here matches what we saw previously for the real category uh, for real transaction sorry but again, we, since we have our aggregated values, we probably don't want to see the old values. So I go back into the uh, configure measurements and then I s make sure to remove those old transactions and we only keep the uh, tra aggregated ones. And of course, with these mapped transactions here, we can also go in and, for example, display the graph and those mapped transaction as, uh, as a graph form or in the stacked graph form if that is also suitable. Okay, so that was the last item that I wanted to show to you here today. So we have now reached the end of the webinar and I thank you all for your time. Uh, I hope it's, this was beneficial to you and that you found it interesting and that I will see you back at the next webinar in about a month's time. Thank you very much.